Hey there, this is going to be a laid back draw with me sketching session. I'm going to draw some fun stuff. You can hang out, follow along. Before I do that, I'm going to check out some of the cool art that I found hanging around the internet over the last few days. Let's get started. All right, welcome to the Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. All right, this one is for Saturday, the 17th of September, 2022. Although I'm on Australian time, so a little bit ahead of some of the other places on the planet. And I'm just going to check out ArtStation and look at the things that I've sort of seen that looked cool over the last day or so. The first thing I saw was a few paintings by Justin Sweet, which uh, again always brings me back to the good old days of the internet because I remember Justin Sweet posting so many really, really cool, really painterly images back in the day. And it's uh, awesome to see that he's still around, sort of still basically you know being him and, and creating awesome work like this and i think here is the second one and yeah i feel like uh you know when i was learning digital art justin sweet was one of these people who was sort of proving that you could get a really painterly look doing this and it was very inspiring and i think at that time there was a real sort of divide between photoshop and painter and I remember there was a bunch of people, um, you know, Justin Sweet included, who were, you know, really into the sort of the painter look. And that just gave them this really sort of organic um, look that just couldn't be done in Photoshop. Uh, now all of these things are kind of blended together. Um, I'm sure it's not just painter. Maybe it is. I don't know. But um, yeah, really, really cool to see. Um, I think one of the things that I always, you know, I'm reminded of when I see uh, Justin's work is just the sort of expert placement of hierarchy of detail, right? Um, really, really good at just sort of nailing that primary read and, and creating, you know, illustrations that really feel finished, even though a lot of the elements there are kind of still quite sketchy. Um, next level ability to just manage hierarchy of detail. The next thing I saw was this, which is just a cool sort of fantasy illustration by Calandri or Xavier uh, Collet or Collet. Um, again, Xavier is someone I've been following for years and years. He did a, a great sort of a comic called Bon De Tene, um, again, with sort of similar publisher and editor to the ones that I did. So I've always been sort of looking at, um, at his work and yeah, just sort of super, super awesome. Um, yeah, just kind of really solid painting and, and drawing and sort of fantasy art. And again, tons and tons of other stuff on their site if you want to go sort of check it out. But yeah, I thought this one was was super cool. And uh, yeah, you know, not not easy to kind of, you know, take a stab at that kind of Middle Earth style illustration. But this looks really, really cool. So yeah, awesome stuff. The next thing I saw was this cool creature horror fantasy design thing by uh, Romain uh, Pommier. And uh, again, like to me, this just reminds me of all the, the things that I like visually about, uh, again, you know, that type of horror aesthetic. I don't do a lot of it, but again, I've always wanted to do sort of a comic with that kind of, um, again, um, you know, really, really cool sort of otherworldly um, sort of design sense to a lot of the creatures and stuff. And yeah, you know, to, to me, I think this one actually has, uh, they have a really cool uh, time lapse you can watch on YouTube. Again, I'll link to all of these in the description so you can go check them out and explore more so you can actually see this sort of being created. I feel like the interesting thing is, you, you know, this this type of work I think is, is what, you know, something like Mid Journey dreams and, and desperately wants to be, um, you know, Mid Journey and that whole sort of psychedelic AI art thing is, is just really trying to create this kind of otherworldly sort of sense of, uh, again, abstraction. And uh, I think uh, people still do it a lot better when you have someone who is just kind of thinking outside the box in terms of what sort of creepy stuff could be there. It's so much more satisfying to see the design be resolved, you know, and have that mix of design resolution, all the forms kind of, you know, actually go somewhere. There's actually something to look at. 
but it still has that kind of Wayne Barlow, uh, Bikinski style of kind of creepiness where you're just kind of like a little bit rattled by it. The next set of things I saw were some cool sketches um, and images by May Dow. Uh, again, I think I've sort of uh, shown some of uh, their work before on um, these kind of uh, sessions. But yeah, just super, super cool. Great mix of simplicity. Um, design uh, and uh, again you know really solid mix of sort of um, exaggeration um, character emotion but you know really really solid drawing as well yeah there's quite a few here I recommend sort of checking them out and just yeah looking at all of the things that are possible when you really really push shape design again always makes me want to do it more awesome stuff. The next thing I saw was this kind of uh, marketing artwork. Again, I don't normally share stuff that is done by sort of a studio because I don't really know who created it per se, but I thought this was just sort of really cool, right? And, you know, again, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we sort of zoom up, it's all fully detailed. Um, it's worth noting if you can get really good at doing this type of, um, you know, large diorama, um, you know, sort of heavily detailed illustration with like a really strong concept. Again, you know, just that that mix of stuff. If you can get really good at that, uh, there is a fair amount of work from my experience, you know, being able to do this. Um, again, not quite sure which artist did this specifically, potentially a range of, of different artists. Um, often these things revolve um, a lot of revisions and a lot of tweaking to get it just right. But I thought this one was, was really cool. Again, a cool idea and um, yeah, yeah, nice, nice execution, nice sort of painting and stuff. Um, yeah, cool to see. And again, worth noting. The last thing that I saw, which again was posted a few days ago, I think was just some sort of John Grello sketches. Um, I'm a huge fan of John Grello. His drawing is just next level solid. And again, he has a really, really good handle on sort of, um, just that, that perfect mix of sort of realistic um, anatomy and uh, again, some sort of stylization that again, I do not possess, but I really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, just the, the drawing is just always so solid and really just cool to see, you know, the, the, the amount of sort of sketching and, um, you know, just sort of going over those things, you know, doing these head sketches and if you do enough of this, you get really, really good at it. And uh, again, probably also someone who takes a slightly different approach in terms of, you know, trying to hit that kind of realism and probably maybe doing a lot more sort of studies and things like that to support that. And yeah, it's always awesome to see how well that pays off. But uh, yeah, super, super cool to see. Um, great posing, great anatomy, everything's always solid. And uh, yeah, I always enjoy looking at his stuff. Anyway, this keeps on going for, for ages. It's a cool sort of old school image dump. So I really suggest you kind of go in there and sort of check that out because again, I think he is a, a great example of, um, you know, a lot of things I always sort of talk about and aspire to get good at in terms of, you know, just sort of rock solid drawing mixed with, you know, some character. Anyway, let's jump over to the sketching table and uh, see what we can do. All right, and here we are at the drawing table. Now, tools for today are some pencils, black wing matte pencils, and I think this is a Mitsubishi drawing pencil, 4B, quite good for sort of laying in something really sort of dark, which we will be doing today. Got some, again, black wing two-stage sharpener, I've got a kneadable eraser, putty eraser, and some Fabriano Artistico um, Bright White. I think this one is 300 GSM. Now this is going to be sketching, but uh, again, you know, normally when I'm drawing uh, digitally for comic books and concept art, etc., I'm, I'm using a very sort of similar process, right? Uh, it's just about sort of roughing in the drawing and doing as many revisions as you need to kind of get the structure right. And then over the top of that, doing some finish lines or inking or whatever you sort of choose to, you know, create your finished artwork. But in most cases, again, all of the time we are doing this in stages. And that's exactly what I sort of do when I'm working like this. 
if you want to learn a little bit more about how I, you know, am sort of using Photoshop and the digital tools to create this, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed at getting you up and running quickly in the line and color style in Photoshop. And I give you all of the PSDs and brushes that I normally use day to day. The work here is a little bit sort of more advanced. I've got some sort of painted backgrounds, a little bit more shading. But uh, again, if you're sort of looking to get up and running with this, the most important thing is to get a reliable process that you can just sort of get in there and start thinking about the story, the narrative, like what is your actual image about? You don't necessarily need to sort of worry about painted backgrounds and all of those kind of bits and pieces in the beginning. It all starts with a simple, reliable process. Anyway, let's do some sketching and see what we can come up with. So I think again, I'm just gonna sort of sketch around and, and sort of see, see what happens. There's, there's not necessarily a lot of you know rhyme or reason to you know how I would sort of find an image in, in this kind of instance. Again, it's really important to have your drawing down to the point where if you if you need to, you can reliably repeatedly you know create something. But in in many cases, if you're just kind of sketching around and, and having fun, you don't you don't always need you don't always need that kind of that kind of thing. Um, but again, the the problem is always, you know, when when I would sort of start out, I'd I'd always be, you know, working a little bit more like this, you know, where, where I'm just kind of, you know, doing a single image and I'm just kind of trying to play around and, you know, see see what happens. And you know, that's all cool, but when it, when I started drawing, you know, comics and doing stuff professionally, what I found was that, you know, I, I didn't always have this kind of freedom, right? I, I had to create stuff that was a particular size, and, you know, I had to make sure that, you know, characters were here, not here. And that's where, you know, being able to to, to plan things, I, I think, is like, is, is a lot more important you know it, it's very easy in the beginning to you know sort of imagine that again if you're going to be drawing stuff that you're going to be in control of exactly where and exactly how and exactly what's going to happen and, and all that kind of stuff and again in in my experience that's just not the case when we're um you know doing stuff for you know that, that either has to you know have a particular narrative story bent right and, and that can be the case if, you know, I was just sort of drawing stuff that I would normally draw. You know, I, I, I would sort of be limited by my inability to uh, construct things that were a little bit more specific. And I was, yeah, often just kind of focusing on, you know, doing these kind of like single images and kind of messing around and not necessarily being as, as sort of serious about it. And uh, so a lot of the advice I give, you know, the, the drawing sort of exercises and things like that on the channel, they, they really are based around trying to give advice that will help you if you if you are sort of looking to, you know, build the, the craft and your sort of general drawing ability so that you can do those things. But uh, yeah, again, I'm not really sure what's sort of going on here. I'm just kind of feeling out the, you know, some kind of figure. Got some hands. But I'm thinking like, again, sort of maybe more sort of uh, older, sort of fairy style fantasy, right? Less so of the you know, Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons type of sort of fairies and fantasy, more sort of, uh, you know, Arthur Rackham, Brian Frode, you know, those kind of uh, fairies, that kind of thing. A little bit more unkempt, right? A little bit more, a little bit less, you know, we sort of live in, in, in castles in the trees and more like we kind of just live in the trees, if that makes sense.
So again, still, you know, at, at some point trying to find, right, like those different elements of the, the figure, trying to find the torso. Right, trying to place some of that anatomy. Again, we'll do some sort of different passes. So again, maybe sort of uh, what we'll have is like a um, what I'd sort of describe as like a, you know, like a vignette or sort of small, like sort of subtle background, i.e. enough to kind of place us to kind of figure out where we are. But again, just a little bit of detail on, you know, a lot of it sort of fades off so we can really focus on, you know, what we, what we want to. So I haven't sort of checked this. What I might do in a minute is sort of get up um, off the table so I can sort of look at this directly, see if we can kind of check the, the posture and everything that's going on. But uh, yeah, I like that idea of kind of things being a little bit more organic, which might help with this, uh, you know, sort of slightly looser sort of pencil look. All right, but again, less uh, less structured costumes okay, I'm not sure how big that sort of torso needs to be uh, again off, often you know when we're sort of sketching around uh, the, the best way to describe it is probably if I gave this to someone else that they're, they're not going to know what I'm talking about they're not going to know what I'm what I'm doing or you know where I was going uh, partly it's existing on the page, partly these are going to exist in my mind, right? In my sort of version of what is uh, is going on. So it, it's important to kind of remember that. Right, it only really matters if, if you understand sort of what's what's going on. Again, not sure of the proportion there. That feels like that might need to be a little bit sort of lower. Again, have some sort of uh, again. Where could we? I feel like if we put another sort of tree in the background or something like this again that might give us that sort of cool vignette okay make that a little bit sort of darker so again i'm being uh, yeah sort of super super sketchy with this um and again that, that there's a reason for that because again it can sometimes you know give you sort of looser sort of feelings but but also it is it is just important in the beginning to you know like loosen up you know like get get into the flow Right, we don't want to tighten up, uh, and that can be the danger of a lot of the the sort of structural drawing stuff that I'm often talking about on the channel, right? Where, you know, it's like uh, draw a circle, draw a thing. Again, ultimately, you wanna you wanna do a mix of you wanna do a mix of both um, for for different purposes, right? We need to be able to like you know get the pencil, draw a perfect line, right? Draw a perfect line, you know. But you know, sometimes you you find you know you get you know, some interesting results, some interesting shapes by, you know, kind of holding your pencil weird. Uh, you know, it can be sort of good. Again, uh, if you've got time or you don't care whether things are going to be sketchy, right, to, you know, play around with this. 
um, and and like make marks that are, are gonna sort of make you then look at those marks and go, what is that? What is going on? Right? Like how how does that work? So again, I like the idea of I, I feel like again like we've have, have sort of a pinup illustration. I feel like that's sort of okay, but I also kind of want something else, right? I want something else there. Again, some kind of sort of creature, right? Make might make it. Again, don't know what type of creature. Some little sort of furry thing. Some ears, again, ears like hers might be cool. Um, and then, yeah, what else can we put here? Let's see if we can, again, sort of put, put right, like a, like a sword or a knife or something like that that feels a little bit more organic. Right, let's um, maybe see if we can, what else could we do? Yeah, like some sort of flask or something like that that feels a little bit more sort of prime, yeah, sort of primordial man. All right, not made um, with any sort of civilization. So again, we're thinking more about sort of rags, etc. Um, All right, let's uh, let's check this anatomy-wise and, and and sort of see see what we've got. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna um, see if I can place the face because that'll be something that is very much worth worth checking. Yeah, I feel like that's that's not not working as well from above. All right, so just checking checking this drawing, and again, what what I'll mostly do is just you know make sure the proportions are you know are sort of working, and and I'll check some of these concepts like again, make sure I've sort of got center right, like I've got some sort of good structure there. And do a little bit more of this technical drawing, right? Bam. Bam. Again, you can see my head pop in there. Apologies. And yeah, just make sure I've got my center. Again, not sure about this sort of face, although it's it's not the face is not um not really sort of sorted yet. But yeah, what I might do again is, is sort of find, all right, find those sort of structural points so that at least when I go in there and have a have a crack at it, I, I know I'm not going to be sort of way off in terms of the the anatomy. So again, I think like, the character will be looking at us. Yeah, again, I feel like that's probably good enough. Let's double, triple check some of these other anatomical points. Bump, bump, bump. 
center neck can probably be a bit thinner. So again, dealing with like a giant, you can see it's getting sort of super smudged. Yeah, dealing with like a giant um, pencil like this again focuses, ma makes me focus on, I feel like, uh, again, those kind of bigger shapes a little bit, right? I, I can iterate, I can I can keep working, but you know, there's probably a limit to to what I can sort of mess around with, which is kind of always good. And like that, bump, bump. Now, again, let's sort of check what's happening here. Center, right, going to have sort of belly button there. Stomach is going to sort of come here, dip down. Then we'll have that sort of pelvic area there. And you can see that, yeah, in this case, we need the that leg to kind of come down a bit more. Bump. Again, same with this. And again, all that's going to be covered up, but yeah, the more we can kind of figure that out, the better. All right. Bump. All right, let's check these kind of knees. Again, this leg's looking pretty pretty kind of chunky, which is not the worst thing, but actually I like that knee. I think I think that will do for our purpose. Yeah, not sure what we'll have in terms of feet. I reckon sort of bare feet will kind of work well. And again, not quite sure what's happening with this character. We probably don't need to figure that out really. Cool. So again, just doing that sort of check, having that sort of, you know, time where I'm, you know, looking at this and, and trying to figure out, you know, what's happening. Now, again, what, one of the big problems you have using that sort of dark pencil, and the reason that I always start really light is obviously that you can see what's going on when it's light. But you don't make a giant mess. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's probably, that's probably enough, you know. So there's a number of ways you can sort of take this back. I mean, one of the sort of classic ways is we can sort of roll it. Which again, will put plenty of stuff on your hands. And this is a good way, you know, it's, it's almost like sort of literally in Photoshop, right? Where you're kind of like lowering the opacity. Um, you know, it's taking everything off at a at a very sort of even even level. Although again, it, it works very differently to sort of opacity because you know once you've sort of taken a chunk of once you've like really dug in, right, that line is going to sort of stay there. Now, obviously, you know that works well if if you've sort of made a bunch of really strong lines. Sometimes I find if if I'd use that process though. Right, um, that I can accidentally take out lines that kind of I wanted to be there. So you do have to sort of mix it up, right? Um, like going around with and doing this sort of dabbing method, I, I find works uh, is is a little bit easier to control because you can kind of really, you know, like I can. It, it really is a matter of like how much I press, right, as to what gets there you know and you can sort of drag it a little bit like you, you have a pretty pretty high degree of control and that is the the beauty of you know 
traditional stuff, right? The amount of control you've got, you know, just through just subtle stuff, right? Like exactly where I put my finger, exactly what I sort of want to get on here. It, it, it's like it's it's like it's in the real world, right? It's <laughs> it's like it's not fake, like in digital land. Um. So, yeah, things that I wasn't sort of keen on with that, that line there. Oh. Yeah, and again, this is where in doing a mix, right? So getting, like making a little sort of shape with it and being able to kind of dab. Oh, allows me to sort of get that off a little bit better. You know, there was there was a lot of sort of, you know, there might be a lot of, lines here I probably don't want oh again a few lines inside that neck so you know you just kind of do whatever you know what it whatever you can all right so um, yeah what we do now is basically add detail so see if we can sort of push and refine some of these lines Had the idea of like a big sort of chunky necklace with some sort of I don't know what these would be like sort of nuts or some kind of seeds or something like that so um, again you know there'd be lo lots of different ways I, I could sort of you know approach the the detail here um, yeah I feel like Maybe some of these lines are getting a little bit sort of dark. Let's see how we go. So yeah, I feel like just need to step off, like just press like a tiny bit less with some of those. They're getting a bit dark. And again, these lines are looking just unnecessarily simplistic, right? Right, they're looking a little bit flat. So we'll just push like the, the bottom shadows a little bit more. See if we can make things a little bit more sophisticated. So again, I'm not not necessarily thinking about you know creating clean lines that I'm going to need to color here. Might be you know just fine to kind of create some texture. You, you can still color that, right? Just sort of put some color underneath there. But yeah, I'm thinking a little bit more about this as a pencil drawing. All right. Let's let's see if we can get this face going. into non-verbal mode trying to figure some of these things out Obviously, you know, we could get a lot more detail if we, um, 
you know, pushed the, you know, made this pencil sharper. <laughs> right. Sort of, again, extra adornment. I feel like, again, need some more hair up there. So again, we can also, you know, take some of this back if it's if it's not working. Um, and yeah, that's probably the face is probably something where I'd want to have another sort of look at it from straight on. But we can probably can probably proceed without you know redoing it. I think also again that there, there was like some sort of hair potentially coming down here which changes things and again just kind of like covers up some of those lines makes them a little bit less sort of vital so this is primary read we kind of got to get it right Probably there'll be a lot of other stuff in this image that's going to be far, far less important, let's say. And we can let it, let it go a little bit. And the other thing is, again, we sort of got a lot of these lines here, right? Um, so again, face is looking like a little bit big. This is one of those things that, you know, can often happen if, um, where have I got, where have I got an eraser? I've got an eraser here. Um, yeah, if you kind of like looking up at the drawing, this is one of those things that I, I find is often uh, likely to happen. It, the, the head sort of looks smaller to to us because we're sort of further away from it. Uh, we sort of make it a bit big, whereas I think, yeah, I think that's kind of gotten a bit, a bit big, or at least a bit big for what I'm sort of imagining. Again, could, could be good to make the character look a lot uh, sort of smaller. Maybe also slightly more positive look. So we can just make that, yeah, a little bit, a little bit smaller. Bump. Yeah, that might be that might be better. I can always tweak it and revisit sort of later. Bump, bump. Mm. So you're trying to find a few places to kind of anchor some of that darkness, right? Sort of frame. frame that face get that right mix of um, sort of crazy hair and stuff around the face and 
And, uh, you know, sometimes I'll leave the face till last, you know, it doesn't, it's not, it's not really any sort of rhyme or reason to, to these things, but in this case, yeah, I just feel like there's not really any point in, uh, in doing any of it if the face is kind of not working. So we will make sure. So again, I can like I feel like again there's some sort of good interests there, interest, and um, you know one one of the good things about you know setting your primary level of focus first, and uh, again this this is you have lots of different strategies for this. A lot of people will leave the you know the face first because then they can put as much detail as they need into it. Whereas what I'm probably aiming to do is do the least amount of work possible because <laughs> that's often what these um, or about, you know, is like make an image, you know, make it sort of quickly and, uh, you know, see what, see what we can do. So in that case, if I set this and I'm like, oh, that sort of looks like there's some interest there, you know, like there's, there's enough stuff going on, then, uh, yeah, that's like a good sign that, you know, if I kind of don't compete with that anywhere else, that, uh, you know, I'll have like a successful image from the sort of hierarchy of detail, you know, one, two, three, read level all right and the the thing i like about again traditional work and especially you know these kind of like watercolor papers as opposed to you know like uh, bristol you know smooth comic book paper is just that you know you you tend to get like a really nice blending of of lines and and sort of texture right i feel like uh, being sort of looser you know works uh, a lot better when we've got a little bit of texture um so again i had like a lot of these kind of bits and pieces hanging off not quite sure what the deal is with those um, and again st still a bit sort of pastiche right we've got this kind of uh, faux sort of underwear bra thing that doesn't make any sense but uh, again probably not going to risk the the YouTube algorithm, YouTube algorithm gods by doing what would probably be the case, which is um, no clothes. Bump, bump. Again, the idea with a lot of these shapes is is to get some stuff that that feels right, feels a little bit chaotic. And a lot of these, you know, little details I'm putting in are just kind of silhouette pops, right? Just trying to, you know, push, um, you know, get a little bit more interest there. Boom. find some of these things as shapes uh, I forget what was going on there but again maybe some of that sort of more chaotic stuff This here, let's make sure. Yeah, I think there is maybe a bit of kind of anatomy there. All right, let's anchor. 
those bits, put a little shadow on here. Yeah, I think that'll sort of solve that. Again, this this thigh is looking a little bit sort of what what a little bit weak in comparison to the to the kind of other ones. Boom, boom, boom. like that they're just getting a little bit sort of overworked right, some more stuff on these legs here again a few more silhouette pops try and continue that general sort of design language there All right, got this here Let's try, let's try this stuff over here. Um, all right, what's going on here? We've got a thumb. Right, which I'm just going to put in a very basic way. Is the scale on that okay? Uh, I think I think that's all right. And here we got this little guy. with the same sort of weird ears. Got a little nose. Eye there. Again, let's make this tail feel a bit more, a bit more squirrel-like or something. Um, so yeah, not 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 really sort of d design, you know. I'm not really thinking about you know what the creature is, but but sometimes you know I I, I find that you know these little sketches you do for these, you know, things where you're just kind of thinking like, oh, let's find some interesting shapes or whatever. Um, yeah, you know, they, they turn out, you know, pretty well sometimes. Again, one out of one out of 10 turns out well and often, you know, can turn into something, right? So again, being pretty, pretty sort of rough here, these are not by any means, you know, primary, probably or secondary drawings. Let's draw the ball of the foot there. And uh, normally the way I do it is I try and sort of mass in that toe, and then I kind of mass in the rest of the the toes there. All right, put in a toenail. A lot of those other toes will kind of Again, um, we're not really going to see them for this kind of purpose. And I'll go with, again, very basic prop from the prop department. 
got some rocks with a bunch of moss and lichen and stuff growing on it. Again, another rock here in foreground. This this one I think in the foreground even more so. So again, just doing very, um, you know, very sort of iconic, symbolic versions of all of these things as they kind of fade off. Um, because yeah, if, if we get to, again, from a hierarchy of detail point of view, um, you know, the, the more we sort of suggest detail, the, um, the less people look at it. Um, and suggest just means, again, you know, that, that you, you can sort of think about it as the difference between, um, you know, if you know what's there, uh, and then you sort of draw it loosely, that's when you're sort of suggesting it. If you don't know what's there and you're sort of sketching, then that's, you know, and, and it kind of doesn't turn out well. Uh, it's often because, again, you're not suggesting something that you know, you're kind of trying to make up um, some stuff and, and kind of, you know, leave it sort of vague. And again, you know, this, this will be a mix of both, right? I'm not saying, uh, you know, I'm always sort of getting this right, but that that's the goal. And the reason is that, it, again, as I said, suggestion is not going to draw the eye. So it, it's it's like accurate portrayal of detail, but not in a in a really sort of specific way, which is the key. All right, leave this for last. Let's think about some trees here. Oh, can't see that. My apologies. Again, we don't need to draw heaps of them. Um, and, and these things that we're sort of doing here are really what, what I would sort of class as micro composition. So we're, we're thinking about, you know, little sort of marks and trying to, you know, relate them to the, to the larger whole um, and, and just kind of think about, you know, how do we sort of place little, little kind of small details. Again, you know, things that aren't really important but still you know that the, the goal is to make sure that it feels as if that stuff is sort of somewhat considered um, and again you know trying to tell that story of depth right here right got some sort of shapes overlapping shapes overlapping shapes right got some hair here and again my goal is for the hair to kind of right I want it to kind of Right, let's kind of flow. All right, got to do this hand as well. Let's do that before we get too carried away. So just going to do standard. Um, fist hand. Bump, bump, bump. Again, suggestion. All right, we can push the, the, the shadows there. So, again, not a great hand, but a hand. No, nevertheless. And now we can frame around that, right? So find some sort of bigger shapes and sort of twisty lines that are going to be in there. And uh, again, you know, we we could uh, you know we we could kind of leave a lot of these right, a lot of these things more faded out, right? So we don't have to necessarily 
you know, finish them all, put heaps and heaps of detail in it, you know, I could, I could sort of, you know, just leave that, you know, like it is. Right, some sort of hair there. We could, hang on, still put in a few little bits here and there, but again, we can do it sort of softer, focus on the focus on the silhouettes that's a bit of a thick line right here I think the goal is to have a few twigs and bits and pieces Not sure how much sense that makes, but again, just putting foresty bits and pieces here. Um, and yeah, we really do just have to focus on just thinking about that one, two, three read, right? Like what what is important? So again, sort of having said that, let's. Right, we got this thing here. And this is where, you know, just doing sketches like this, you know, um, that, you know, I know aren't going to have a, you know, like a, a super high level of polish. We, we're still thinking about the same things, right? Because, he, he, again, it, it's not a matter of just being sketchy. I, I don't know what's there. It's a matter of like, yes, I, I don't have much time. You know, so I need to be efficient. And some of that efficiency will come through, you know, leaving things with a with a with a sketchy style. Um but you you also, you know, get to get to practice all of the things that, you know, you sort of need to to learn for illustration. Or at least, you know, I, I think so anyway. Um, you know, I I think that, you know, often what we're doing with a sketch, as long as we sort of try and imbue it with some sense of illustrative quality, you're you're practicing all the same bits and pieces. And so as you work up detail, you're thinking about all these things, right? Like, where's my focal point? How do I, um, again, maintain hierarchy? What's my first read? What's my second read? Etc. Etc. And, you know, that is the difference between it you know, sort of, f from my perspective, right, it's sort of turning out well and not. You know, one of the biggest things that you often face in the beginning is, um, you know, stuff feeling overworked. Um, and uh, again, not knowing where to, where to sort of leave it, right? So in many cases, that's, you know, exactly what I'm dealing with here is just sort of balancing those things. Where can I have lost edges? Where can I have, you know, found edges? Um, you know, all those bits and pieces. But, uh, yeah, you, you need to, I, I think that there needs to be some level of, of theory involved, I, I think, like some sort of low-level sort of conscious effort as you sort of approach different bits and pieces. So, you know, sort of going into doing this, I'm kind of like, well, you know, I don't want this to compete too much with, uh, you know, with some of the other elements, right? Because, uh, you know, I, I don't think it'll kind of... I don't think that would sort of work well. Um, yeah, not sure about, not sure about how the, that is kind of working. Um, let's try and have it go this grass or moss or whatever is that's kind of right let's just try and have it go in one direction because that seems a bit kind of simpler oh.
but yeah again balancing all these things right like really making sure you we think about it now again you it, it's a lot harder to get it right in this instance we, we don't have a lot of i don't have a lot of ability to sort of modify um you know the drawing you know at this stage right you know that's kind of that side of it is is sort of done um but yeah you you, you often have to sort of play with these micro compositional things right just thinking like what's got more contrast what's got less contrast how do i sort of push this oh, how do i push this forward right uh, where do i add detail how do i build up this detail do i need more detail less detail where does the detail go etc etc um and and just sort of being aware of how that is likely to you know um make someone kind of you know look around the image right and, and sort of think about uh you know the the eye flow right like the the the, the directionality of what we're doing as we sort of experience the picture now again i feel like some of that stuff there was too much compared to you know what's going on here now that we're sort of there but I think having some stuff in the background like that, as long as it's kind of vague, might might help. If you were to color it, right, you know, that, that stuff will totally help. Um, you know, put a bit of rough stuff, you know, rough color, you know, underneath these things. And all of a sudden, these little sort of sketchy lines will feel like there's some bushes back there or something. Um, so yeah, again, good idea here to kind of just step back. What have we got? What is kind of happening? Um, again, just trying to sort of anchor. Anchor that detail a bit more here so that, so the, the main thing is I, I, I like the idea that the, this sort of hair thing right sort of fades off towards the background and that all fades off but again the question is sort of you're essentially dealing with atmospheric perspective at at that point right you know it's sort of fading off and fading out um and so about like managing the 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 distance right is sort of critical i.e how dark is how dark are all these different elements? How much detail is, you know, is going to be on all these sort of different things? And uh, again, that's where, yeah, we can, you can kind of push and pull it a little bit. But uh, as I said, you know, having the face there, having the face be, you know, a little bit more detailed, a little bit more pushed, I think is, uh, you know, always a really sort of good thing because uh you know then i know when to stop right um again as soon as i'm starting to compete with that then it's all over so again you know i feel like some of these darker bits there are a little bit much um and again you know i can probably make this guy A little bit more prominent so yeah again we're pretty much at sort of the end of it so you know just sort of sketching around um and you know as i, as I said you know I, I think trying to play around with these types of images is super super useful for development it uh you know it, it sort of turns on the right bits of my brain right you know th there's different sort of elements of drawing you know sometimes it's structure sometimes it's this sometimes it's that um, but yeah, really thinking about, um, you know, like exactly, uh, how to balance an image, right. And, and just sort of focusing on that, um, you know, for, you know, just sort of an hour is super, super helpful. And, uh, again, it's a good example of how I think, you know, as, as I said, you can be working on sketches, you can be working on drawing, but you're building all the same things that you're going to need for illustration, right? Hierarchy of detail, you know, how do you sort of manage foreground, middle ground, background? What's the primary read? How do you make sure you don't upset that? 
And uh, in my opinion, again, this is how you build those muscles without spending, you know, way too much time on it, right? Without, you know, going crazy and, uh, uh, you know, uh, having to sort of engage in a 40 hour illustration to, you know, get, get yourself started, right? To, to kind of just, you know, get off the ground. So again, good middle ground uh, for sort of playing around with stuff. I feel like this has gotten my brain into the right sort of frame for sort of finishing stuff off. And uh, again, good sketching session. Uh, but that's all I got for this one. Let me know if you got any sort of comments or questions about this or, you know, anything else drawing related down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you've got any sort of advice, things you think would be good to talk about in following episodes, please let me know. Other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.